there's lots of commentary out there about whether or not guitarists need to know music theory, whether they need to be able to read music, all kinds of discussions on this, and they're all fascinating to follow and listen to. I learned to read music as a kid. Um, learning guitar was just a natural part of it. Uh, you ended up, that was the way you got music, was as sheet music. So you, you basically learned how to do it. Now I was never a great sight reader. I'm not trying to say I can fluently read two staffs at the same time and, and put stuff together. That was never my forte. But being able to plug my way through the basic ideas and use sheet music without feeling too uncomfortable about it, now that is something that I do think there's a little merit to. And it's maybe not well-founded merit. Uh, for instance, if you know how to do mathematics and can read mathematics, you got a leg up. If you can read a computer language, you got a leg up. If you can speak, read and write uh, different languages for communication purposes, it's really great. But that doesn't make you a speed reader, right? Speed reading is something else. So, we're, we're not really trying to talk about this idea of being able to sight read music, sit down and just blow through music and, and make it appear on the guitar. That, that's not the idea. But the idea is we should be relatively comfortable with the language of music, which is going to be uh, essentially a staff in some form or another. And so to, help, to sort of show how simple this is, we're going to pick some very simple music. You pick complicated music, which you often see when people are teaching music, uh, you're going to struggle and you're going to be overwhelmed. What we're going to do today, or what I'm hoping to get you to, to, to see uh, as part of what I like to do, is if you approach the music in a simplistic fashion without getting too uh, detail-oriented, at least right away, music is pretty simple to, to learn to read. And so what I've chosen as a piece of music to work with is from the world's fa favorite artist, Taylor Swift, uh, and one of her runs. Now, whether you like her or not, you have to admit, she can find catchy melodies, and they're typically just one note progression type uh, melodies that are easy to hear. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna pick one of her melodies, and I've, I've got it on the screen. Uh, down below at this point, I hope. Um, and you can just sort of see, it's a little bit of one of her songs, um, Shake It Off. It's a pretty little song, it's got a cute number. And if we look at the staff, and I've got a, a version of it down in front of me now as I'm recording this, but I'll be putting it on the screen uh, for you to see. You can see that on the far left, there is a curly Q symbol, that's our treble clef. Right beside it, we see a flat symbol, it's on the third line of the uh, staff lines, and then we've got a, a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. And whether you memorize it or not, or just look it up, this particular um, version of Shake It Off is being done in F major. And so we have a flat on the B, uh, and that is the third uh, line from the bottom. It's actually the third line from the top two. Uh, and that's really all we have to remember about that. It's, it's good to remember, but we need to flatten any B notes we run into. Fortunately, in what we're going to look at today, there's no B notes, so we don't really care. Now, one thing we're going to do that's a little different, if I was to, on my guitar, say, where is middle C? Middle C is going to be right here. Well, middle C actually sits in the in-between space between a treble clef and a bass clef. And we can see where that note is on uh, our first riff. It's the note that's sitting just below uh, and in the empty space between it. That is a C note, and that would be our middle C. Well, we're going to cheat. We're not going to do that. If you remember how a C chord works, okay, we have two Cs in it an octave apart, so we're just going to drop an octave. So while that's our true middle C, we're going to pretend that's our middle C. And so in that case, our very first note uh, at the far left is going to be a C note. We know that because the spaces in the treble class spell out face, F-A-C-E. And that's all we're going to remember. We're not going to remember much more than that. F-A-C-E, so we can see we're in the C note position. We got a C note. We're good to go. What's the next note? Well, we move over one note and we look at it and we go, I don't know what that is. Well, we sort of do. We can just count up face again. It's a, it's a note in the middle uh, between two lines, so it's going to be uh, one of either F, A, C, or E. It's going to be then in the second position, that's an A. Okay, so we go to an A. Now the thing to 
the thing to be noticing is there is a line between it. And so between the A and the C is, of course, a B note. That B note would be flattened, and so it would be here. We're not going to play it, though. We just skip the line in the middle. We skip the note in the middle. So F, A. And the next note is the next uh, note available. That's going to be then uh, a G. So and then we drop down to an F. Now you'll notice that's four notes. Well, we're in 4-4 four, four times, so that means there's going to be four quarter notes in one measure. That's the next line we see. So there's our four notes. They are quarter notes. They're colored circles with a stick on them. And that is our uh, basic understanding of what the staff is telling us. Now, we're not going to get excited about timing today. We're just going to talk about reading stuff and get an appreciation for what goes on. We don't know how fast this song is going to be played here. We didn't put a, uh, a number of beats per minute to go with, so we're not going to get too excited about that. But we've got our first four notes. It's going to be just... And we can read that off. Now, of course, I've read this before once or twice. If you're just looking at the first time, it's a little confusing. But you're just going to step through it. And when we come back to that last note, that A, which is in the next measure, we can see it's an open circle with a stick and a dot. Okay, open circle, stick, and a dot. That is a half note, the circle with the stick. And the dot means go uh, a half the time duration more. So this would be a half note plus a quarter note in duration. Okay. And then we come to our next quarter note, which is uh, that middle C that we're playing here. So we've actually got our uh, little riff worked out. Easy. Now, this isn't simple the first time you do it. You might have to sort of say to yourself, well, I've got an A, uh, uh, you know, that's in between a note or something, and I'm looking to go higher and lower. We have to ask ourselves, what is the next note after A? Well, it might be a B. So we say, okay, remember, you know, that might slow you down. It might become a little bit confusing. But you do this enough, and again, we're sounding things out as we go, and things make sense. Now, in our riff, the remaining line is just the same thing again. We just go C, A, G, F, and then back up. And you notice it's followed by a funny looking symbol that looks like a little box on one of the lines. Well, that is a half note rest. Okay, so we've gotten through this very first line, mostly with me chatting on it, but it's very simple to follow just by knowing F, A, C, E. And we know that if you are in a space, a note above it would be one count up, one count down. And that's all we're really doing. And in fact, we don't even need to know the name of the note. We just need to know that we have to progress in the scale one note up and one note down. Remember, we're in an F major scale. But that is our first riff. And we should be feeling pretty happy. This really isn't something that's taxing us to death. Um, when we come to the second riff, we're going to see some new notes and some new shapes to those uh, symbols that look a little confusing, but it's not really much different than what we've been looking at already. So let's look at riff two. So in the second riff, we see all the same stuff to the left, although the first thing we come across is a squiggly symbol that actually is another rest. And we notice that there's a bunch of uh, notes, but they've got a line across the top. So normally we would have said, oh, those were a bunch of quarter notes, but now there's a bunch of lines. Well, that bunch of lines changes them all from being quarter notes to being eighth notes. So when we have four eighth notes, that is essentially a uh, uh, set of two quarter notes. Okay, so now we kind of know what, what we're trying to do. We've just made things faster. The line is just sort of joining them together so we get the idea rather than writing the little uh, squiggles on the ends of the sticks. So. Not very technical language here, but it gives us the idea. So what are we doing in riff two? Well, in riff two, we're basically saying there's a rest, then a rest of a different length before our first note, and it's gonna be played as an eighth note. 
okay? So the only thing we would do here different than what we're doing before is we probably change our way of counting. We could just count one, two, three, four in the first riff, but a cleverer way of counting is to count one, and then instead of going directly to two, we go one and two and three and four and. And the ands uh, have kind of doubled up our spacing so that we uh, are now putting sort of two counts per quarter note. Um, they're still played in the same time of the chord note if we wanted to be consistent, but we kind of know how long we're delaying. So if we looked at riff two, we would go one and, that would be our first ref, rest, and then there would be a two, our second rest, and then we start on the, that eighth note. So we would go one and two, and then in the and, we put our C, and then we play down again. Okay, so we've got the riff going down. Didn't do that very well, thinking too much about my counting. Let's try that again. We're gonna be going one and two, and then we play the takes us to the end of the first bar, come back to the A, G, F, D, C, okay? And then we run out of playable notes and we see two more little box shapes and those are uh, half, uh, half note rest is the first one and a full note rest is the second one. So we're seeing a lot of spacing and timing things, we're just making comments on them. Uh, and just introducing the ideas. But once you get the idea that there's places where you don't play, we call those rests. There's places where you do play, that's the notes. And we group things together in ways that kind of make sense. Now, we're just picking the notes, but we can actually help ourselves a little bit when we look at this. If we consider that um, that first note is a, uh, the low C, and then we come up to the high C, and the A, G, we can sort of see it's like an F major 7 chord. Right? So we can sort of think about where our fingers need to be and get our spacing right. Now, that isn't said anywhere in the music that we're looking at. That's something that we ask ourselves later. Is there a way of making this easier to play? Can we find a chord shape that makes sense. And that chord shape that makes sense for the picking the notes may not actually be the chord structure um, that you were thinking of when you were playing that particular song. Sometimes you're looking for shapes that are more beneficial. And so these two riffs that we have from Taylor Swift's Shake It Off, very simple, very single note melodies, uh, but we've taken ourselves from going, wow, I don't know if I want to read music or if I should, to realizing, it isn't that hard to get started. Now, of course, this is going to require practice. It's going to require some time looking at it over and over again. Um, but if you put a little bit of time in, let's just say spend 10 minutes a day for 10 days or so, you're going to start finding it's a very comfortable thing. And it's going to take a lot of the uh, apprehension away from approaching the sheet music. Now, nothing is going to make a very complicated set of notes easy to look at. Um, that's going to take a much longer period of time. But for very simple music, this is going to give you some good insights into how to move forward in getting comfortable with reading music.